One of the important parts of the Passive House methodology is the use of the Passive House planning package. Passive House planning package is um, a software package based on uh, Excel spreadsheets that actually models the performance of the building. Now in, in the UK, normally for, to, to comply with building regulations, we use the standard assessment procedure, SAP, which is a similar form of um, software that will tell you the energy use of the building. The difference with Passive House Planning Package is it was designed for low energy buildings. So it's built on a platform specifically intended to model low energy buildings. The standard assessment procedure wasn't. So PHPP is designed to model the building accurately. And the big advantage of it is that we know that it does model the building accurately because there's been lots of monitoring um, and all of the monitoring shows that if you take the average value, Passive Planning Package always accurately predicts the energy use. So it's an accurate prediction tool. Now that's very important because if you're going to model a low energy building and you haven't got an accurate prediction tool, then really you don't know where you are. You know, you've no baseline, you don't know what you're working with. We know that we've designed the Denverdale Passive House and we know that it's coming in under 15 kilowatt hours per meter squared per annum. We don't know for sure what Jeff and Kate's energy use will be, but if they are at the average person, if you like, so if we build 100 Denverdale Passive Houses, then the average energy use would be accurately predicted by Passive House Planning Package. To use Passive House Planning Package, it is a series of Excel spreadsheets, so we basically have to go in and fill in all the data for the building uh, in various sheets. It's not that easy to use, I have to say. Um, we've had training in this for the ACB, uh, has offers training courses, and both Bill and I did one of the early training courses, and then our construction technician, Paul Smith, has also recently been on a uh, training course. So we've got a fair bit of expertise in Passive Planning Package, um, and that's been very important to us. One of the interesting uses of Passive Planning Package is as part of the design process. So. As we've gone on with the Denver Dale House, we've been tweaking the package. So as we thought, we'll change that detail, do it this way, we've actually been able to model that and then put that into PHPP and see the effect on the total energy use, the space heating requirements of the building. One other important facet of the uh, Passive House standard is that it requires a lot of data. You, we can't fudge the data. So, it requires input of, of data that is not always required, well, not required in the UK generally to meet building regulations. One particular example is um, the linear thermal bridging coefficient, or the psi value, which is a value for uh, heat loss at junctions. So if you imagine where a wall meets a floor, or a wall meets a roof line, or uh, where a window frame meets a wall all around, you've got a junction there and there may, may or may not be some heat loss ascribed to that junction. The problem is that in the UK generally we don't model that. We, we, we have um, a way of, of putting in a rough figure, if you like. It's called a, a Y value. Passive House methodology insists that we put in an accurate figure for those values. So again, it leads us to a much more accurate prediction of the performance of the building. For the Denbydale House, we've had to model some of those junctions. We've modelled the, the floor-to-wall junction, we've modelled the door threshold junction, we've modelled around the windows, and we've modelled... The, there are a number of pieces of software we can use to do that modelling. That's not done in Passive House Planning Practice, it's done in separate thermal modelling software. We've used uh, some software called Therm, which is actually free, and it's freely downloadable. Um, you probably need some training to actually use it, and we've, again, some training and with some extent we've been self-taught in using it. Um, but it's again it's an important tool because if you change the detail we can go back into Therm, we can remodel that junction, we can find out our side value and we put that back into Passive Planning Package and again we can see the effect. With PHPP you trade off one element against another in the fabric. So for example if you go for a cheaper wall insulation you might have to get um, or pay for a more expensive, high-performing roof insulation, or the windows have to be um, of a better U value, for example. And that's the beauty of the PHPP. 
the, the software package in that you can enter different values for an element and you can immediately go to the end and see the uh, result of that. So for example, the mineral wall bats, we've got a choice of the cheaper £2.38 a square metre per 100 millimetre um, 37 model or 0.037 lambda value against the £6.47 per metre square per 100 millimetre 32 and we've got to decide there is one in between 34 so it makes a big difference one in cost and performance so if we put in the 32 what are we going to put in the floor and the roof do we make the window smaller so at some point you've got to say right no that's it um, and um, the windows are set therefore we've got less to play with another element is the MVHR mechanical vent heat recovery if you could put in a better unit a more expensive unit that's maybe 95% efficient as opposed to a cheaper unit at 85% efficient that has a vast effect on the PHPP and the final figure, that magic 15 again. This week that figure has gone from 19 down to 14, up to 18, back to 14. Playing with the elements and the cost of um, that we're going to be using. Um, and we're actually going for the better um, wall bats. Uh, because it gives us greater flexibility in the size of the sizing of the north facing windows in this project the gardens on the north side and understandably Jeff and Kate the customers um, want to look at their garden it would be far easiest for us to have a, a for us to have a blank wall on the north side <laughs> and them not to see their garden but of course that's not on. So the better insulation I can get in the cavity, the more views I'll have of their garden. And it's as simple as that. Before we started on site, we had um, uh, a training morning where I went through Passive House principles. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we were detailing um, in the way that we we are and stressing how much care was going to be necessary they went away sort of fully understanding it and of course it does come down to how it is designed and um, how buildable the actual detailing is um, I realized how easy it was to transfer that knowledge when we had good drawings which of course on a one-off house build quite often you don't have. So following on from that uh, training morning, um, we would have a toolbox talk on site at each stage of the build. So everybody was completely aware of how we were going to actually construct the detail. And actually sometimes we changed how we would do the construction. Um, for example, when we poured the concrete in the ground floor slab, that was done in a simpler way than I'd originally thought. And that came out in a toolbox talk. Crucial for buildings to perform to passive house levels is the way that a contract is set up. By that I mean how the builder is employed. The relationship between the client, the designer, the builder, and also the relationships within the building team itself. I do feel that with the demise of the apprenticeship system, skills have been lost to some extent. Um, we went over to a more subcontracting ethos due to economic reasons really which doesn't lend itself to us building to the, um, the care that we need to get this sort of airtightness, for example.
So we have, say, the plumber doing his bit, bashing holes through walls for his uh, pipes, um, and you've got a plasterer coming along, making up around those pipes. Now, that detail is absolutely crucial to um, air tightness. Are they looking out for each other? Whose responsibility is that hole through the wall? Well, um, I'm afraid our existing building practices uh, don't cope with that situation for um, a passive house standard. We've got to relook at how different trades interlink with each other. Um, maybe we have an on-site foreman that sole job is to look out um, for air tightness detailing. With a partnership arrangement, everybody has um, a stake in the build. We have a round table ethos where client, designer, builder actually get together and make sure that everybody knows why we're doing something and how it's being done. And that's what we were able to do on Denby Dale.